Let me take you back to the Helldivers 1 days when the railgun that we use today used to be a primary weapon. This was something that was used in a team setting, and usually only one Helldiver had this weapon in the group, as it was meant to stun heavy units while the rest of the group attempted to take down those enemies or at least recover from the hordes of them depending on the situation. This was the best use case of this weapon, and it still hit hard, but it was more meant for opening up an opportunity for you or your team to work together to take something out or get an objective done. Now, come to Helldivers 2, and this weapon is now a support weapon and seemingly sporting a few upgrades, and is used for basically everything. I would say that a majority of the player base is currently running the railgun, and for good reason. This thing can take out virtually any enemy as well as handle almost every task in this game that it has to offer with essentially no drawbacks. So the question I ask is, why is there 12 total support weapons if only one is necessary to essentially handle the whole game? Now, I as much as everyone else would like to see the railgun stay the way it is currently, as I don't think the game needs to nerf it, especially in a game where it's just PvE. I believe that one of two things needs to happen. Either the current support weapons get balanced to rise up to the level of the railgun, or we add more support weapons that are currently on par with the railgun to handle most tasks. I would personally prefer that both of these things happen, since all of the current support weapons in the game are actually really cool and can shine very well in a team-oriented setting. Then we add more weapons with future patches to add to this amazing arsenal and just make it so we have quite a lot of choice and diversity. I have ran solo a few times in this game, and while it's possible to complete any mission solo on the hardest difficulty with any loadout, bringing the railgun essentially makes every mission drastically easier and more doable. If you think about it, if you wanted to run solo, most other choices are going to hinder you in some sort of way. Now, I won't claim to be the best player around, and this will be easier for some, but for example, the MG has a lot of ammo and can take out hordes very easily. The only problem is it doesn't do anything to elite targets with decent armor. So, unless you have a teammate or a stratagem to reveal that weak spot under the armor, I say good luck. Anti-material rifle is great for hitting weak spots where you can, but you are forced to aim through a scope if you want any semblance of accuracy, on top of the fact that the armor penetration on here is actually really weak. So if you do miss that weak spot, it was essentially wasted time. Then we have the stalwart. This is basically just a primary, there isn't much else to say, and I don't feel like it was really necessary to put this in as a support weapon, and it's not going to do you much good solo or really otherwise. The 817 is a great weapon at base value, and it can actually take out heavy targets decently well, but with a 70 second base cooldown, you aren't going to be able to take out more than two heavy enemies at max, which is assuming that you landed amazing shots on both of them, and it either took them out, or you can handle the rest of it with a primary you have on your person. Uh, best example of that is the charger shooting their leg, revealing the armor. That kind of thing. Recoilless Rifle is just an 817, but worse due to the requirement of an ammo backpack and extremely slow reload time if you don't have a buddy to load those shells in for you. The Flamethrower is a decent choice, but it's meant for more of a crowd control situation and won't kill an elite fast enough for it to prevent you from taking a fatal blow. On top of the possibility that it just lights you on fire and gives you another thing to worry about. The auto cannon is a really big hitter, but only, only if you have access to weak spots, as this reflects off armor, as well as the need for a backpack and the slower reload without a team. There's a bit of an exception here, as if you reload with one still in the auto cannon, it makes the animation faster and decreases the reload time. However, this isn't going to be much of a saving factor in most situations, but it's at least a small plus for this weapon. The spear is a really cool idea, but with the lock-on being so inconsistent, on top of only coming with a few extra rounds with the support pack and slow reload, it's just a massive chore to really deal with this weapon, and attempting to use it on heavy targets or outposts without a team reload. Grenade Launcher is great for taking out outposts and nests, which is something that the railgun just can't do, and it also has some decent crowd control. But the thing about it is it bounces off of armor, and it doesn't do much damage to those bigger enemies of the game, which is one of the biggest parts that's lacking, as it is an explosive weapon and lacking in that area is just something that really sucks, and so it's gonna be better used when you have it for like blitz missions or just in a team setting where somebody can take out that armor first and then you can hit that exposed weak spot, which again, isn't a ideal, obviously. Uh, the laser cannon is okay, but it has a decently long time to kill and an overheat mechanic which doesn't allow you to fire it very long and it can't do most tasks particularly well. This also gets affected by the hot planets, which does make its heat meter rise faster, most other things don't have that problem, and it's just another thing on the list to worry about that you really don't have to. Lastly, we have the Arc Thrower. This one is going to excel in a team setting if you're on crowd control, and it can take out heavy targets, but not very efficiently. The one major saving factor here, especially solo, is this thing has infinite ammo. So having to recall down any sort of resupply doesn't really matter, as you can usually use this regardless. 
When you bring the railgun, it can take out heavy targets relatively quick, even if you don't hit the weak spot. It does not require any sort of backpack, so that space is free for you to run something of your choice. It can be reloaded at the same pace or faster than primary weapons, depending on which one you're using. And it has the ability to use unsafe mode, which does increase the damage on areas that aren't weak spots. Now, granted, this usually only matters when you are hitting direct armor, but still, being able to essentially manually buff your weapon at any given time is pretty crazy, especially considering the risk factor is very minimal. With some getting used to, you can get that buff without ever blowing the weapon up. Plus, on top of all that, the weapon sports 20 shots out of the box. So this weapon really is just the self-sustainability king. It doesn't matter what else you run with this weapon, it can cover almost any task this game has to throw at you, whereas everything else is lacking in one area or another and requires you to bring in something in the form of either a teammate or a stratagem to make up for that difference, which limits your options on what you can bring further. My whole point of this video was to create a discussion and point out the fact that the railgun is a massive outlier, and currently there just isn't a reason to bring anything else besides that weapon as your support. Will this get boring to some? Absolutely. Some have started to branch out and try other things, which is great, as I think there should overall be more options in here that make sense to bring, but if you have a team of people to play with, this is less of an issue, of course, as you can just plan in a team setting and bring whatever you want, but the problem here is when you play randomly with others online, you just don't know what they'll have or what they will bring. So if you don't bring the real gun, you may be stuck in a situation where you're not able to handle it because you didn't bring the real gun, and those randoms you joined are off doing whatever it is that they do, while you're stuck with Bile Titans chasing you around and Chargers trying to field goal you. All while you're running around with a spear that has four total rounds and won't lock on to any of your pursuers. One of the fixes that could be implemented here is making it so if you join a game, there is a finite amount of support weapons of a single type, that can be selected to allow for a diverse selection and encourages more team play. Now, I know that isn't a great solution because everybody wants to be able to pick what they want, but if they don't decide to implement something like a balance change or other support weapons and add some that are equally as good or have more of a reason to bring, which I highly doubt will happen, then I would suggest something like that as a semi-fix to having some diversity in teams. Now, like I said, I know not the best solution, but just kind of something at least. Now, I have confidence that at the very least, we will start seeing more support weapons that are better than the current offering, but ultimately, it's up to the devs to decide what they're going to do, and we will have to wait and see what decision they make. So, the main point of the video today was to bring an open discussion to the railgun, and here are some of your ideas on what the community would like to see as far as these weapons, whether it's balance changes, new weapons, or just a whole new take entirely. So, thank you so much for being here, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video, and we will see you in the next one.